Hey YouTube, this is Zach with Achilles Financial. Today I want to talk about Holicity, and they are trading on the NASDAQ HOL. This is a SPAC, and today they announced that they are going to be taking Astra public via a merger. So again, we have seen a lot of incredibly hot SPACs lately. This has been something to continue to watch, and I anticipate we're going to continue to see more. The reason that this one is so hot, as you can see by the percentage increase just over the past two days, and even the after hours movement, the days change, is because they are merging with a rocket company that is sending people to space. So the contents of that deal is essentially they are raising millions and millions of dollars to help fund some of the capital investments. What I'm gonna do today is take you over to their investor presentation. As you can see, we have the website here up on the screen for Astra. Again, they are going public. You can see this information here. Again, feel free to go to the website. This is something that they are looking to do to raise funds so that they essentially don't have to do another private raise to do so. But it's a cool company. They are going to be competing directly with the SpaceX's of the world, with the Blue Origins and with Virgin Galactic. And if there's one thing that I am a fan of, it's companies who aim to be profitable. And I think that they have a sharp line to be able to do so. So some of the information that we wanna talk about first and foremost, and this will be included in that Vester presentation, is some of their leadership. So Chris Kemp, the big thing that I want to talk about is he was the chief technology officer at NASA and he's had some seriously high power positions with Google and Microsoft and he helped create the Google Moon and Mars project as well as he has worked with the White House for cloud computing strategy. So he's worked with a lot of high powered names and I think that that is a huge factor there because he essentially is capable of bringing a lot of that experience over to another company. However, again, we have these visionaries, the other person here, Adam London, again, uh, visionary. These two guys have a lot of the know-how. The person that I really want to focus on is Kellen Brannon, and this person is the person who was the head of finance at Amazon.com. The reason why I consider that to be such a big deal is because a lot of these companies struggle with cash burn. They spend more than they make. And because of that, it is very difficult for them to make any money. And I personally like to be someone who works with companies or invest in companies that make money. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Again, a lot of other individuals here, but those are the ones that I wanted to highlight as the ones that are going to be important and driving growth. So again, they talk about some of the information today in terms of what they believe is going to be important going forward. Something that I want to highlight is they are going to be closing 500 million in cash proceeds. This is pretty common for a lot of these companies because again, these cash injects, injectments are coming from anywhere between 250 million to as much as 2 billion if you look at even Pershing Square. The reason why this is important is because this values a company that's currently not making any money at $2.1 billion. So this is all on projected revenue, a term that has become increasingly more popular. Something that they essentially are capable of looking at is they still have the potential upside for 200 additional million dollars. So what we're gonna be looking at here is what is going to be going forward? How do they have the capability to make money? Well, some of the items that we'll highlight here shortly is they do have over $150 million in contracted launch revenue. So all of this information is readily available on their website. You have the capability to look at it. We're now gonna dive into the presentation. And now we are looking at their investor presentation. This is something that is readily publicly available. It is on their website. All of you have the capability to go and check it out. Feel free to look at it and form your own opinions. I'm not a financial advisor. Don't take my advice. This is just my opinion. So you, you guys know if you've been here for a while and that's what all this stuff says. So as we go through this, uh, they have been launching a lot of it, rockets and all of those are on video. And one of the things that I wanna look at is alongside SpaceX and Rocket Lab, 
Astra represents the third U.S. company since the turn of the century to privately develop a satellite launch system and successfully reach space. So they already are launching satellites. That's something that I want to highlight. They have been working with the U.S. government to be able to perform a number of services, and they already have contracted revenue for taking people to space. Uh, some of the information that we just talked about is included in here. Expected to close in Q2. I do want to highlight that. Again, I don't know if my highlighting is going to be particularly beneficial for this approach, but again, this is expected to happen within the next six months. So as you can see, we've got a CFO who has a high power background, the founder, Chris Kemp, who is the one who is kind of the visionary. But again, I'm really looking at, and I apologize if I'm botching her name, but Kellen Brandon, because again, she's the one who's going to, or I'm looking to, to make sure that they are actually helping them make money. So as we go through this, I'm not it's similar to what we've been looking at for a number of these other investor presentations. I am not going to be going through a lot of the individual information just because I, I think that you all have the capability to look at this. And blatantly, it's not all important to how I'm picturing my investment thesis. Right now, you see $216 billion expectation for satellite manufacturing spending through 2030. 40.7 billion invested in space. If you read the footnote, it's talking about with plans to launch in the next three years associated with that. And one trillion total space economy. Uh, I think this is a made up number, but sure. So yeah, it sounds right. So what does that mean? It essentially means that there is a lot of capability to move forward in a lot of open space, uh, white space for potential deals. What I'm looking at here is this is where they start making their money is their satellite capabilities. As you can see here, their expectation from today over the next 10 years is essentially a 8x multiple uh, during the from what we did in 2020 to what the expectation is for 2029. That is a lot of potential revenue. If they're able to tap into this and make it profitable, I think that that's a big deal. So you can see that uh, this is a statement that they are making. Everything in here is their presentation. So they want it to sound really good. But what we want to look at is, are you capable of breaking down the cost to make it affordable? And again, you can kind of see these different satellites between the two. This is, or maybe you can't because it's so small here on the right hand side of the screen. But what they're looking to do is basically cut down the capability of launching this from tens per year to thousands, launch costs tens of millions to millions, time to launch months, days. One of their objective statements is they want to launch satellites and launch and take people into space daily. So that's something they expect to do within the next five years. They're not capable of doing so today. So you can see some of the way that they have their platform today. Again, not gonna go through all of this information we wanna talk about the fundamentals. They're going through each individual item. Again, they wanna take people to space. You can see that information online. So they already have launched into space. They've done test launches and they are planning on taking civilians into space this calendar year. So that's what we're gonna be looking at for this year. And they did it faster than everyone else, including three years faster than SpaceX. I know there are a lot of people who push SpaceX on uh, Instagram, they push them on TikTok, on YouTube, on Twitter. I am personally not a huge fan of SpaceX, or not SpaceX, I am so sorry, but uh, Space Virgin Galactic. I like SpaceX, I like Astra, because they actually have a goal of making money. So I, I like all three of these companies a lot. So we're gonna be scrolling down here. This is the big thing that I wanna be looking at here is how are they going to be making money? You can see that they have a backlog. Remember, this means booking, not revenue. We want revenue. Contracted revenue doesn't mean revenue. So that means they have 150 million in bookings. And for this to be recognized by Gap Accounting, they need to actually perform the service. So a lot of potential money, it's gonna come down to the same thing we were talking about with Starpeak, is are they able to execute on what they say they're going to huge pipeline again made up number that they can't really use yet 
uh, but I think that there is a huge capability for them. This talks about all of the board of investors and who the important people are. Someone who I want to highlight is Mark Benioff. So the CEO and founder or one of the founders of Salesforce has been through a number of in successful investments. And I don't think that this is going to be any different. I am a huge Salesforce bull and I really like Mark as well. And for that reason, I think that this company has a lot of potential. You can see some of their expectations going forward. I'll leave that on here just to talk about it. Again, daily launches by 2025. This is how you make more money. So this is what we're looking at in terms of the funding. They don't expect to be making money up until really 2024, 2025. So they've already outlined that cash burn. The key for this company to do well is on this slide right here. Are they able to execute or are they going to require more money? Oftentimes, if the stock price does a sharp rip up, they will issue more shares, and I think that's going to dilute the company, and this chart is going to be skewed based off of that information. But we'll see. We'll see. I would love for them to prove me wrong. This is the slide that I am basing so much of my potential off of uh, for two reasons. Again, the valuations in here are insane. Again, you can look at SpaceX not SpaceX, I'm going to continue to say them, but Space Virgin Galactic and what their expectations are. If this company is truly bringing in $1.5 billion in 2025 and the adjusted EBITDA is essentially $700 million, this company will be doing very, very well. So there's going to be some debt to pay off, but $700 million over the current share price is looking at a very healthy valuation. Some of those valuations can be seen down here below where we can look at the public peer operational benchmarks. There are a lot of companies in here that I don't like and it doesn't make sense that they're included. We wanna be looking at companies like Orbcom, so not DraftKings. I don't really know how that is going to relate, but you can see just some of the projected revenue growth. These are monstrous revenue growth proportions kind of across the board. The EBITDA margin, they are saying they are going to essentially have 46% of their revenue go straight to the bottom line, which is a huge deal. Granted, this is forecasted out to 2025, which is a big deal. Looking at the price to adjusted EBITDA, right now they're saying it's 3.1x of 2025 earnings. That is a huge deal. However, now that number is 6x. So again, there's a lot of capabilities here, but you're looking at a company that you can probably expect to trade at 70 times 2025 earnings. So for that reason, I think that there's a lot of potential here. All that being said, this is the information that I really wanted to talk about. It kind of goes into some of their other info and how they expect to be able to build on this, but I'm going to go back to the financial summary. For them, to effectively capitalize on this transaction, they are going to have to execute on this plan right here. If you miss out on some of these launches, for example, if they do less than three in 2021, you're going to see bigger cash burn and you're gonna see less revenue and that's gonna carry forward. For the idea of number of launches to be 300, which is supposed to be daily at this point in time, remember, that means you're going to be collecting $1.5 billion. Any hiccups here is going to ruin that. However, they've got a great team, it looks like, and so I've got pretty high expectations for this company. And for that reason, I'll be looking to initiate a position. Again, that's just my opinion. Part of that reasoning is because I think the covered call capabilities on these companies are going to be insane. And this could be a company that we could even see ARC invest in as well. So let me know in the comments below if you find this information helpful. And if you're new to the channel, please leave a like and subscribe. And if you want to know the plays we're making, join the Discord. Thanks. Talk to you all later.